quick introduction first of all, if you haven't met me before, my name is Peter Wood and I've been invited to do a demonstration painting for you, a step by step. I've been a professional member of the SAA for many years now, one of the founder members in fact. Okay, well we're going about this in slightly the reverse order because I've already made the main film and done the final painting which you see here. This is what I'm going to be aiming at at the end of this. That is one final picture of the whole scene of a teapot in a summer Provence garden down by the seaside there at La Pradette. And we're going to be using for that final one um, watercolour techniques of wet into wet, wet next to wet and wet over dry. And then we're going to be using masking fluids as well, learning how to do that and how to find lost and found edges and get the different textures between the, the watercolours. But I'm going to start you off actually with some easier ones because this is a slightly more advanced one possibly. And let's start off with just a simple one of the teapot itself on a smaller sheet of paper. So we'll go on to this size sheet here. And we'll just do the teapot itself because I want to show you how to draw ellipses. I want to tell you about the drawing of shapes like teacups and ellipses and, and bottles and so on. Give you some tips on that which I'll do at the end again. I'll repeat them to make sure that you follow right through. And how we're going to paint that teapot, how we're going to use masking fluid and about these lost and found edges and even in the reverse, because I'm going to be putting uh, masking fluid onto the background of the main painting, but in this one I wanted to actually use masking fluid on the teapot itself as well. So I show you different ways of working the same theme. Normally I would use frisket um, film on the teapot for a larger area rather than mask the whole teapot out with just masking fluid. It's a lot easier to use and it makes sense, and I've been doing that with themes such as acrylic inks and pastels and so on, great fun to use. But in this case, as we're starting you off with this material of, of uh, masking fluid, I'm going to mask the teapot itself and some of the flowers in the background a little bit. Then we'll learn how we can use the watercolour over the dry paint and over the wet paint and into the wet paint and so on. And we'll do a few different techniques with that as well, so you can explore this, this avenue of, and ways of working before we come to the main painting. It may be you like the more simplistic ones even more. One of the beauties of watercolour is its simplicity. The controlled accident that we can have with watercolour is wonderful. Controlled accident being the term. Often it takes you a few watercolours, even when starting to do watercolour again, to get loosened up enough to, to flow in watercolour. Uh, watercolour is a very intuitive medium, it's a very fluid, beautiful, luminous, transparent medium. We want to try and keep that freshness if possible and, and to use as few marks as possible. Anyway, here we go then, let's start off with the teapot and how we are going to draw bottles and teapots and those sorts of shapes with ellipses so you understand perspective and those ellipses first of all and then we'll move on to the teapot itself. Let's move on how to actually draw the teapot now. To do that I need to explain proportions and ellipses and perspective to you. This may seem complicated at first but in fact will become simpler and simpler until we just get it down to the basic vertical lines, ellipses and the horizontals. In my illustration here we have an imaginary tube on the left hand side and you see I've cut it off at the eye level or the horizon. At that level we would just be seeing straight across the tube. As it goes down the tube if we keep slicing the ellipses would become rounder and rounder until eventually we'd be looking straight down upon them. Looking up the tube at the dark undersurfaces again they would become wider and wider as we slice them off and look up the tube above us until it would become circular above us. Please note that the ellipses never become pointed at the ends they are always slightly curved. Now taking those ellipses across into the teapot to the right you can see how I've used them there. At the top of the teapot the ellipse is almost flat because it's almost at our eye level. As the ellipses go down the teapot they get wider and wider towards the bottom. Next to get things equal please take note of the vertical lines I've drawn down the middle of the teapot also down the middle of the bottle on the top right. Not only the vertical lines down to get things the same each side but also horizontal lines across the middles of the ellipses because each quarter of the ellipse should be the same as the opposite quarter. So bottom right quarter would be the same as top left quarter of an ellipse. Making vertical and horizontal construction lines is very important, especially when making shapes that have equal sides. You can see here both in the teapot and the bottle. If I've drawn a, a centre line down, I get the shapes the same sizes each side of the centre line. I can do that by measuring the horizontals to the same distance. You can see that on the bottle. Not only the horizontal line going across the ellipse, but also the vertical line going from top to bottom. 
Without those construction lines, you can see how badly things will go wrong by the left-hand bottle. Finally, on this sheet of illustrations, look at that sphere at the bottom right of the sheet. It only looks like a sphere and round because of the shading on it, the light shining from one side. This is something we have to be aware of when we're doing our teapot. To show this more clearly, I'm going to do a drawing using a cup and saucer to show how the ellipses work in perspective. The patterns in the tablecloth will help me to show you this as they're already going into perspective top right and top left to two different vanishing points. Here you can see I've drawn the lines in perspective of two rectangles going to the two vanishing points and how the ellipses would fit inside those rectangles. Now let's remove the cup and saucer so we can see the pure construction lines. What's missing here is the centre of those ellipses. We need to find the centre of these ellipses to be able to get each quarter equal. This will become simpler and clearer as I move on. Here I'm showing you how we're going to start the teapot and how each of those equal sections are measured out from the centre, left and right, so we know where the proportions are going to come and the circle is going to be made. Here's how we're going to make the drawing. The circle half on the left and the circle half on the right have to be equal. So the proportions are equal and the shape has to be equal and the same. You'll notice that the ellipses are also equal. To get the ellipses level, we should have drawn horizontal lines across the centre of them also, as we've just shown in the previous illustrations. The other horizontal lines on this illustration are to show how we find out where the other objects come on the surface of the pot, where the teapot spout comes, where the handle comes and so on, and those lines will line up with where those objects fit onto the pot surface. The top of a teapot spout should be no higher than the teapot and should be at the same level as the height of the water in the teapot at its highest, otherwise it will start to pour out. Now I've shown you the bare roots and basics of all of this, I'll do it very very simply for the actual drawing far more simply than you've just seen here, and it'll all make sense to you, I hope. Later on, our background is also going to have some flowers, so I've shown you how we can even use ellipses and perspective to draw those, making it much easier. Well, that's the first one in this series. I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible and take you through different methods and techniques of watercolour whilst I'm doing it. So we're going to do this picture, and I'm going to show you the easiest way to draw it that I can. To construct it, having just shown you about ellipses and the more complicated ways of doing them. And we'll do some simple techniques of wetting to wet and sponges for the background and also use a little bit of masking fluid just to get used to doing the foreground in the pot. And what I want to do is simplify the colours on the pot just to show you how we can make roundness with only using a few colours or we'll save the more complicated colours until the second uh, session. Just to get my proportions right, what I'm going to do first of all is separate out this photograph into approximately quarters. So halfway, quarter, quarter again here, same this side, halfway, approximately halfway, halfway, halfway again, and I've already done the top and bottom. I'll just do that the same on my masking tape here. So halfway, halfway, halfway again, making it as simple as I can for you. Halfway, halfway, halfway again. Halfway, halfway, halfway again. Quarters. Same here. Now, we need to find out where things are in space here, where things come proportionately. So, so if I come across here for the top of the teapot, for instance, it's just about halfway up that one here. So halfway up that one here. If I come across with a very light construction line, all I want to do first is just get construction lines. So here, halfway here, across to there, just very light line. You can use a ruler if you want, but it doesn't really matter. Very, very light, just to know where things are. So that's where the top of the um, teapot comes, the, the ellipse here. And that handle is, look, it's just about level as well. So that handle would be level there as well. And the top of that handle, the very top of the curve, comes just inside this mark here. So if I make a little X here, that's approximately where that handle is going to come. Like that. There, we know where it is now. The edge of the pot, let's get that next. That's coming up to, to here. Straight up to there. So if I make that into thirds, if this is into thirds, then if I come down from here, construction line, that should be about where that comes. Now, we need to find the centre of the pot. The centre of the pot is, this is important, one of the most important marks. The centre of the pot is just inside here, about here. That's about the centre line. 
if I come down there, the centre line. Now, if that's the centre line, perhaps a little bit more. But uh, this right, yes, just just to the right of centre. So it's I'm just about there. In fact, a little, that's a little bit more this way. So I'll just make that mark and just change that line a little bit down to, to there. Just rub the wrong one out. Very simple. So that's my centre line. I haven't draw it an angle for you because I can't get with the tripod in the way. I can't uh, get, get to it. So we know that if that's centre, then that has to be equal to this. This is what I was thinking about equal equal marks. So if I go from here to here, then my other side should be just here. I'll double check that there and there. Yes, that's right. Let's see if that works on here now. So if I come up from here, it's just inside halfway, it's just inside, it's absolutely perfect look. So that's my mark here, that's my mark there. Those are important marks, so I'm a little cross there, so I know where I am. This is just so, so we're going to be able to construct this more easily. Where it finishes down here, it's coming across there, it's... That's halfway, it's just inside halfway, so it's about here, that's halfway, just under halfway, be that here, okay, that's my construction line coming across here, for the bottom of the pot, that's this bit here, very lightly, just, just a very light line across there, just so I know, use a rule if you want, like I say, so we know where that's coming, that's the base of the pot, how far out does it come? Well, let's just measure it against here. If I draw a centre line down my photograph here, we can measure it both on here and on the paper, if you see what I mean. So I can measure it both here and on here. If that's that width there, that's this one here. How many of those am I going to get in? From the middle, the one half approximately. So if that's that width, that's one of those, and just about half again. So this should work out. Let's see if this is right. This should work out at one and a half. So we can measure it that way. We can also measure it on here. So if this is coming down here, where does it come? It comes about a quarter in. There's halfway again, and there's a quarter of that. So it comes about here. And look, that's spot on, so we've got two ways of measuring that. So that's that angle. Now we know that it has to be the same this side. So again, I can take this, come across here, make a mark. And there is going to be the outside of my teapot and the top. Now, that teapot isn't coming in a circle right around to here. It almost does, though. But let's just draw that then, same curves. We'll just take that teapot and we'll come from here which is the top of the teapot. So in a fraction, in a fraction, here, like that. Because we know that's going to be the ellipse. This is my line across the middle. This is my line across the middle of that part, across here. Because the ellipse is going to go equally both sides of this. So that ellipse is going to do both this and this. So you see why I've drawn that line for the halfway. Both that and that. There's my ellipse for the, for the top of the pot. It's going to be a bit neater. I'm going to draw it at a distance here because I can't get close to the, to the uh, tripod of the camera. That's about right there. It comes around. It's slightly light at the edges here. There. Now from here, this has to come from that point there and up. So here is that. It's almost a circle. You can almost draw this by drawing a full circle here, look. So the circle is the same <coughs> this side as that side. It's a full circle going around here. 
and the circle comes down and around right out here down and it's not a, a, a round circle it's a slightly flattened circle so it comes around like this down there whatever we have this side has to be the same this side so up there That side has to be the same as this side, so there we are, there's a halfway line, this has to be the same this side as this side. Under there, make a very simple teapot. Don't worry if this isn't quite the same as the photograph, it's slightly rounder or slightly flatter. It's going to work for what we want. All we've got to do then is add on the peripheral, so we've got that, we've got our centre line. Now where does this come and where does this come? Right, the bottom of the handle comes just in line with that there so that's where the bottom of the handle comes that's this bit here and the top of the handle comes just a little bit above the middle mark just a little bit above the middle mark here so it's there i've already got it look i've got that angle coming up now just check the angles the same here's the angle here's the angle where does it come to it comes out to about a third about a third of this one two three up so that handle finishes here comes up to there come up to that point there curve around and it has to come from here so curve that round to there down to here and finish at this mark you get those angles just by looking, just by moving your hand. That's up to there. To make it a double line. I just gradually work my marks up rather than trying to be exact straight away. There we go. Down to here, and then this handle part comes down below. Goes into there. That's the handle done. We've got the various flowers and things here, don't worry about them too much. Where does the spout come? Now I was saying you can't have the spout um, above here because otherwise if you fill it up with water, when you fill it up with water, when you start to pour it, um, the, start, the water will start coming over here rather than out of the spout. And if you have the spout too low down, the water level will come out of the spout lower down, so you can only half fill the teapot. So the spout is just below the top. That spout is coming out about just below the top here at a, at a slight angle, just below there. The top of it's about up at the same level. How far out? Up you go again to the one above here. That's a hole, that's a quarter. Then that end of that spout is just inside the quarter, about here. Come down there. That spout should be somewhere about here let's see what happens somewhere about here yeah so how far down again it's oh just just under halfway so it's about here just under halfway that's our point there that point comes then up to here you can see the angle is the same by joining the dot it's a little bit like the um, dots and dashes in a comic where you've had the where a child's magazine where you join the dots and the face appears how far down here that's just below this mark here it's about there we know it comes out at an angle like that see the angle there and so we have to now bring that out down up there like that and there's our spout so that's fairly simple based on the circle it's a little bit squatter than I've got here so I'm going to make it a bit, little bit wider that's a bit wider there as well there we go so that's a simple way of making, it, making this teapot remembering the centre line and remembering the line across here we haven't got to worry about the ellipse too much because you can't really see it down there it comes down and right through here. <coughs> That's all we're going to need.
for that um, for this starting painting, and then to use a technique I want to use. We're going to mask this whole teapot off for this particular painting, and I'm going to show you ways of doing wetting wet backgrounds and textures background. So I need to get some masking fluid now and I'm going to mask the whole of this off. I'm going to just draw a couple of marks in here before I mask just so I know where some patterns are coming. I know there's a light bit just here. I know there's a reflection just here. I want to leave these reflections behind shortly. I want to show you how you can make this look round but very simply. But we're going to find out much much more in depth colours later. That's a reflection there and there's a reflection here. And the shapes of the colours where they're coming through here. So the masking will finish there. What we're going to do is we're going to work our lightest colours here out across here to our mediums and down to our darker tones here when we start doing colour. Right, for this first project what I'm going to do straight away is mask off the entire teapot. You'll see why in a moment. If I were doing this for myself entirely I would probably use something called frisket to coat this teapot and that's a transparent low tack material that you can put on and then cut through as a stencil and peel away leaving the clear plastic film covering all of this area. Right round there. This is a special SAA masking brush I'm using. It's not an ordinary brush because ordinary brushes tend to clog up with this and you ruin them. So special nylon SAA mask fluid brush. Cleans up afterwards. You can wash it off while it's still wet. You can peel it off when it's dry. Around this shape here I want to go. Got a reason for that. Right through here, no problem. Down there. Around here. Right down to there. We're going to teach you about wet in wet, wet next to wet and wet over dry doing this and how to blend wet into wet, how to get almost like miniature graduated washes and variegated washes. A graduated wash is where it comes from dark to light or light to dark. Variegated wash is colour to colour. When you put one colour next to another and they're wet and they bleed into each other so this is just to mask off totally. My drawing will remain underneath, you don't have to take it off, won't lose it. But as I say, normally I would use something called frisket, which is a low tack masking material. It's a very low tack plastic film that you can cut through as a stencil and either leave it there or cut the stencil out and peel it away completely up to you. It saves putting on these massive amounts of masking fluid like this. There we go. And that's just given that a total coat. Masking fluid that will come away nice and easily when, I, when I'm ready. Now I'm not going to do the flowers on this one directly. Uh, I'm going to leave that to just a simple wishy-washy background. Uh, but when I do the actual ones on the second painting, I'm going to show you the flowers in more detail and how to get hard, sharp edges. Well, let that dry a moment. Right, for this part of the painting, I'm going to use a large oval mop and a sea sponge. I'm going to start with wet into wet. What I'm going to do is wet a whole of my paper with this oval mop. And that's one of the lovely things about using masking fluid. We can go right across all of this. I want to get the whole surface nice and wet. We'll just accept the paint and the paint will explode outwards. What we want to do, use the effects of watercolour, the beautiful effects of watercolour wet in wet. 
there we go make sure it's totally coated all the way across don't worry about painting over the masking fluid it, it won't affect it at all now the masking fluid is dry but it should be all the way across here now I'm going to start off with my lightest colours and work through to my darkest so what I want to do is pick up some very very light blue at first some turquoise onto here and we'll just drop that turquoise where the flowers are going here flat just so I can get these lovely light colours wet into wet background this I could use this brush for the whole thing if I wanted to because I could just make the petal shapes with this as well it's a lovely brush for that just letting it spread out letting these flowers have an idea of the background here this is a lovely cool blue it's the turquoise cobalt turquoise blue we've got at the moment all the way down around here and obviously a bit of that new colour that we haven't really done much with uh, on, the, on the main big painting at the end because I say, strangely enough I've done the big painting before I've done the, the, the work the, I've done the large painting, the final painting before doing the, the, the uh, studies like this so we haven't used that lovely uh, magenta as I wanted to show you so it's wet into wet there, all the way through here, wet into wet, right up to there. Now let's take some of that lovely magenta from earlier, I was just talking about. It's a lovely light magenta. We'll just drop that in, just let it spread out into here. Just little touches here and there. Let it spread out behind there. Nice and easy, out to the white and just tips of the tip of the brush, look. Just letting that magenta spread. So it just blends back in. We get the effect of misty flowers behind here. Right down into there. A little of misty flowers. Up into there. Now I want some warmer blue. So I need to go some ultramarine. Just here. I'm going to stop to drop that in. Just wet into wet around here. And before this dries out completely, I want to come back in with the other sponge and do a little bit more textural work. At the moment, I'm just doing very soft wet into wet effects. Don't completely cover it, I'm just letting my colours spread out. Look, putting them in little dots and dashes and letting these flower shapes appear on their own as a slightly out of focus background. I'm going to go to my yellow, it's my lemon yellow. I haven't used the aureolin yet, I might use a little bit of that in a moment as well. I wanted a slightly lighter yellow first of all. don't want hard edges so I've got to keep this going very quickly now to make sure I don't get any hard edges. completely cover up the white going into the blues as well here to make a green because when I put the yellow with the blue of course it's going to make a, a green let's try some of the aureole in yellow now see how that works it can be slightly warmer I might use the aureole in yellow for the pot actually be quite nice a, bit, a little bit warmer into here in places just blobs of colour. Back to my lemon yellow again for this green into there and down here. The aureole and and the and the um, lemon yellow. And to finish off, we need some lovely darks. So let's take a beautiful, rich, rich deep Prussian and um, purple mix for that. So my Prussian blue, my purple. Got to get them soaked down. I want to be quite quite dark with this one. Plenty of paint mixed up to make a darker tone. And we'll drop those in these dark areas like this. Right across down here. We don't need any, any of that left behind. I can do quite a bit with the brush, you see, making textures. Lovely soft wet into wet background there right down through into here 
can go over the masking fluid here, it doesn't matter. And it's lovely and wet, got the flowers just showing. Go a little bit darker, we'll take a wee bit of the indigo into that. And what I want to do now carefully is just use the sponge. Put some oreo and yellow with the blue with the blue to make a, a very very deep green with the green I've already got. It's a lovely deep green for this. And with a bit of luck now, if it's dry enough, I don't want it too dry, just on the damp scale, take my sponge and dip it into what I've mixed. And if I'm careful, I should be able to get a lovely leafy effect. Look that lovely effect I can get of, of leaves coming out, the texture coming out there. And it'll just spread back in nicely. Wonderful effects we can get. Even over the flowers a little bit, just to get the effect of the flowers, textures. Right down through here. Into those flowers. Down there. And there we are, that's pretty effective and that's really all we need for that background. Just a tad more down here, I think. Yeah. I don't like that word tad, it's fun, fun, isn't it? It's a very old English sort of word. And you see how it's spreading out? So I'm going to let that dry a little bit more and then come back with a wee bit more of that just to give a bit more texture. Just needs to be a little bit drier. Right now the paint's a bit drier, we can go in with these textures. Just a little bit more texturing of the background. Quite simple, easy to do. We need to let that dry off and we'll remove all of that masking fluid. Just to give a bit of texture to go behind smooth pot. Right, we'll let that dry and that should make us ready for painting the rest of it. Right, once the paint's dry enough, and do make sure it is dry, we should be able to rub away the masking fluid completely. I tend to use a bit of cloth for that, it seems to just catch it better look and lift it off. Take us back to the white paper again. We don't want texture in the flowers of the whites this time. I'm going to show you that next time round. There we go. Get all this rubber off. Latex masking fluid. It's the SAA blue masking fluid. I like to use that most of all because I can see where it's gone. Unless you've got a painting with very light blue in it. In this case, you can see well enough. There we go. That's all the masking fluid off. I'm ready to paint. Before I work on the teapot, I'm just going to take a small brush. I'll take a number four and a little bit of brushing. I just want to indicate, only indicate a few petals. If we do this. We just give a feeling of other things going on behind here. We don't necessarily have to make them. We just give a feeling of them being there. It's just an impression. Just some of the salient points where they are. Not to overdo it. Just a few little marks here and there just to, to show that there is something else going on behind here in this texture. I'm just about to do it. Just, just an impression other things happening behind here. Just let the eye and the mind do the work afterwards. There we go, that will be enough for that. Now, back onto the teapot itself. And what I want to do here, very simply, is make that area the lightest and then come out to darker areas around. So I'm going to hit that one with a larger brush, use my mop again, 
Let's hit that one with the lemon yellow. Very, very lightly. So it's almost white. And come around that. No masking on this at all, just wet into wet and wet next to wet. And I'm going to paint that yellow and different graduations all the way around this, first of all. A bit darker here. I'm going to go right down to here. Nice big oval mop. Very, very useful tool. Around there, down through all of that. Now, having got that, I'm still going wet into wet. I'm going to take some of the aureolin yellow, which we decided was a bit warmer. And I'm going to go around here with that. Still wet into wet. It's lovely and warm just here, right around that handle there, down here. Around the outside, so I'm making my darker colours more around the outside here. Still wet next to that. Thinly here. Down there. Give me a bit of reflection there. It's nice simple single strokes. And we'll have a little bit of that colour coming down the inside of the teapot spout here. Under there. You see how simply we can do this? Keep it simple. Right down to there. And it is quite strong just in there, so I'm going to put a little bit more of that yellow. This is just to get you used to using thicker and thin paint. So you see I'm using quite heavy paint now to make this bit here. Much darker and stronger into these little bits. Right round this edge, right round there, and inside here, tip of the brush, warmer just here, down to here. Then I want to go a bit pinker, and that lovely magenta I had earlier, let's take a bit of that. And I want to use a little bit of this magenta down through here. While it's still damp, all the way down there, magenta again. Letting it go into the wet into wet as well. Down here, you see I'm working around the outsides more now, we've got the middle just about done. What I'm doing now is more of the outside here. Just letting those colours go darker and darker around the outside, leaving that light. Warmth around there, warmth around here. And as the paint, you're also learning about the paint drying, as the paint is drying, we're able to put harder edges over the top, right around there. And here, letting the wet soak into the wet. Down there, right through here. Got the feeling of roundness now because we're getting this. Now I want to take the reflecting colours of the blues and take a little bit of the turquoise while it's still wet and bring it into here. So wet into wet, but it's gradually drying, it's drying quite fast in the sunshine here, all the way around this bit here, a glaze. Now this is dry, so this is a glaze, this is one colour over another, and this turquoise is quite nice as a glaze. It's going to go all the way across here. Comes all the way down around here. We're using this now over the semi-dry paint. Right into there. Good exercise of wet into wet for you. Quite strong round there, look. Quite strong round here. 
we'll let that delays in, clean the brush off if we need to and just let the, the clean the uh, clean water just blend into that there. And around the neck here. Down here a bit. Let's go quite thin into there. Thin down coat of that paint right over this bit here. Down to that yellow. It's quite strong just there. It blends in. Coming down here. You see the rounds of the pot we're getting with this, so those few colours. We could have done this with just one or two colours, but I just wanted to show you how it can work. Now back to the warmer blue, we'll take some of that lovely ultramarine and we'll come around here with that because it's much stronger down here. So I'm putting into the wet now some ultramarine blue. That's a French ultramarine, so stronger. And look how we get that lovely granulation there. And around there, the ultramarine, just rounding that off a bit here. A bit into there, around the handle here. So using the same brush, if you can't handle a big brush, then go down to a smaller one. We work from our largest down to our smallest normally. And look, we've almost got that teapot done. It's almost there. Down here still more. Take a bit of the purple and a bit of the ultramarine. It's very deep mauve. That's better. And we'll go around the bottom of this with that colour. A little bit too strong, so a little bit lighter. Right around the bottom, linking it into the base here. You see we're almost there, so I've cleaned my brush off now. Suck some of the water out of it and just come down here and blend that in in one stroke. You see our teapot's almost done, right? Come back to a smaller brush because I really can't do this with a bigger brush now. And just need to pick out this dark of this teapot neck here. Look how simple all of that is. Right round to here. My big mop again, we'll just put some of that colour around here. A bit more shadow just down here, reflections. And if I want to go a bit stronger now with the Aureolian yellow, this is the time to think about it. I can go back in with a another little wash of that if I want and just Strengthen here some of these yellows. And leave little light bits showing the single strokes like this. And voila, we have a, a finished teapot in a few brush strokes. Okay, don't need to do much more. I can just tidy up a little bit to get a little bit more of the a little bit of green and Prussian and just come back around here a little bit. So a little bit more green just down here in places just to indicate leaves. And that green can also 
been brought across here a little bit too and reflecting into these surfaces. There we are, don't need to do much more than that, do we? Bring the green into here, let's put these places here. Like a bit of leaf or something showing over here, yeah, we'll just indicate those. But I think that's enough just to do a quick teapot for you and give you an idea of just how easy it can be just to work up these shadows. Suck the paint off with the brush, dry the brush off, suck the paint up a little bit if there's too much. And we've got our lost and found edges here. You see what I was going for? I think that will be enough just to give you an idea 